Dimitri Kuznetsov, uh, Department of Homeland Security. Yep. You're the Under Secretary for Science and Technology. Yep. Thank you very much for joining us today no, on my our pleasure. My Security TV. Uh, welcome to Singapore and Millipole mm -hmm. and TechX Summit. Uh, being an inaugural event, uh, have you been to other Millipole events around the world? No, I haven't, world? so this so, is a okay. first, so this is uh, nice. I suppose my first question might be your engagement with Singapore uh, in your role. Mm -hmm. You've been in the role since 2022, uh, I That's believe. right. Yeah. We, we have a lot of bilateral relationships with uh, key partners. Singapore is one of them, uh, but around the world we have uh, many of these because a lot of the challenges we have in Homeland Security are fairly common. And, and strong partnerships are key to our success. As I mentioned off camera, Department of Homeland Security and your role as science and technology, <laughs> these are massive yeah. uh, sort of beasts on their own. Um, what do you tend to focus on? What, what's your current sort of focus and drive uh, in your current role? You know, I think every country has a different definition of homeland uh, and, yeah. and kind of the responsibilities. Uh, the DHS mission is, is really a crazy space, uh, <laughs> cobbled together uh, after September 11th. Uh, and it, it has widely disparate missions, you know, from FEMA and emergency management, so uh, natural and man-made disasters, to Secret Service and U.S. Coast Guard. Uh, it's uh, customs and border protection, it's immigrations and customs enforcement, it's yeah. transportation security, TSA, airports, it's, it's collections of these operational pieces and on top of that it's first responders. So we also are the research development test and evaluation for first responders nationally, just like two to three million additional folks that yeah. we, uh, we have to think about and it, it is a crazy space to be in but really an important time. I suppose that from a technology viewpoint, we might start with AI. You were on a panel yesterday on AI. You were formerly in, in charge of an AI role with the Department of Energy. Mm -hmm. the, the comparisons or similarities from what that previous role was, I'm just thinking Department of Energy, kind of defined space uh, and dealing with critical infrastructure mm -hmm. to now looking at AI in uh, defending a homeland and sort of policing and, and the like. Is there much comparisons? Is the challenge differently? Different? It's, or is so the technology it's, it's different in, in, in ways that uh, I didn't fully appreciate. I, I yeah. knew what DHS was and I'd worked with science and technology uh, on the outside when I was at Energy. Uh, you know, Department of Energy, the name is a misnomer as well. It, <laughs> it doesn't do as much energy. It is more a national security organization and a science agency. Um, and so a lot of the work is, you know, that's where the nuclear weapons programs sit in the U.S. Yep. Uh, and, and so uh, uh, it is national security and open science. It's kind of this spectrum. And DHS is law enforcement. And, and there's a key difference there. In when you're doing law enforcement, uh, you have to have tools that are discoverable in court. Yeah. And, and so there can be great things that are being done on the national security side and you can't use them because you can't reveal them. Yeah. And, and so it is a place where your hands are tied, where, you know, at Homeland Security, we interact every day with millions of people, literally millions. Yeah. Uh, and, and so we have more interactions and face time with citizens and, and, and visitors than any other agency. And, and there is a strong public face and interaction with the technology. And so it's not a science project on doing something fun with AI, it's what is the impact on people. It's the, the dynamic interaction with people which also makes it far more complicated. Science is great until you interact with people and then it's different. <laughs> That's right, the fun, they take all the fun out of it. Yeah. I suppose the other interde uh, interdependencies uh, of this technology, you mentioned people for a start, yeah. but other systems and the way that the Department of Homeland Security is spread across the US, yeah. as well as reaching to their international partners, uh, I suppose those relationships do come into play. Oh yeah, it has um, to. Yeah, maybe where do you see an international role, the five eyes being uh, sort of here in Australia, well here in Singapore, but uh, it's a strange. So we, we share well. tools uh, yeah. in five eyes, certainly AI tools, but there yeah. are channels in which we couple very strongly in terms of best practices, approaches to common hard problems. So we, we do some of that behind the curtain, but we also have a lot of open uh, channels of communication. I you find it requires a different way of thinking, the AI, given sort of the, the data sets that are possible uh, and often required uh, to make it uh, more functional and, and effective. 
do you find it does require a change or do you find that the infrastructure or the frameworks are there already just to be built on? Uh, I think there is a, a, a lot of commonality of purpose. I think w all of our countries struggle with the same kind of challenges. It's not just the world around us changing slowly with climate or more, more directly with extreme weather. You know, the commonality of that's never happened before. You know, a couple of years ago it was the wildfires in eastern Australia, which, you know, that hasn't happened before. We have the same problems with, with wildfires, but extreme weather broadly. So we're in a world that is changing around us in ways that we're trying to understand. And at the same time, emerging technologies are exploding everywhere in terms of their uh, use. It's, it's every sector of the economy, it's every demographic, it's, it's everywhere. And, and so as you try and put those things together, it, it is a lot. The world is changing in ways that we have not seen in our lifetimes, that perhaps no one has seen before. And, and how do you think about the homeland in that context? If, if everything was constant and flat, it would be a much more sane conversation. Yes. But we see so much change and, and more partners thinking about this together from first responders and you know, lithium ion battery fires today yeah. to what's coming tomorrow is just wide open and requires more people talking. How do you structure your team in that regard? So I, I don't know how big your team is, Welcome to, to let us know if you can. But yeah, how do you find your structure? You have teams forward looking, uh, a bit like a CTO kind of role that they're out there looking at what's coming. And you've got sort of a team dealing with what they can do right now. Do you, do you have a, an approach? Possibly yeah, so comes to my first question of how do you deal with scale uh, in this space? So we have a, a series of our own uh, uh, unique laboratories. Uh, we, we work in the biosecurity space. Uh, there's a, an island we have, Plum Island, which is kind of uh, famous in the U.S. for many reasons, yeah. uh, where we do uh, it's a, what's known as a biosafety level three facility. We have a biosafety level four facility uh, as well, where we do very unique research uh, in, in bio agents and bio threats. Uh, we maintain labs for uh, urban uh, uh, science and technology or urban response. Uh, chemical safety laboratories, other kinds of laboratories. And, and so we have a workforce that includes laboratories but program managers as well. And part of it is you have to prioritize. You know, it, it, there isn't enough money or people or, or means to solve all the problems we face. We, we choose our battles, we look to see what the operational sides of DHS and our partners are, are thinking about and we look to see where we can actually have an impact. Um, the other one is the framework that you operate in, uh, and as you say, the US is still leading uh, sort of the world within AI and AI related research. Uh, applied in the policing model, mm -hmm. maybe to, even to the, the yep. still the cop on the beat, so to speak. What's your expectation sort of over the next five to ten years? Uh, we we're just talking to the Australian Border Force uh, Commissioner as well in terms of how our borders and our passport systems, QR codes coming through are going to fundamentally change. Do you think from a frontline policing perspective, a first responders perspective over the next sort of five to ten years, this technology will be embedded within what they do? I think so because there's a lot of mundane work. You know, we've been trying to help, uh, for example, TSA, our Transportation Security Administration, on uh, officers at airports you know, who I have seen, uh, you know, having to carry luggage, having to move carts around, you know, not doing the jobs that they're actually really skilled at. And, and automating that, you know, we, we released uh, just, um, boy, what are we, last month, back in March, uh, a, uh, uh, a self-screening capability for airports, uh, where we relieve, uh, you know, in principle, uh, officers from having to do mundane. We're, we're trying to do that with um, the uh, uh, situational awareness reports that come in through our uh, investigatory uh, efforts where you see uh, something, oh, a suspicious activity report, excuse me. Uh, these are, you know, handwritten notes often or someone sees and we have literally millions of those. And we're trying to automate that with large language models to try and draw in the context and distill from millions of these that we archive is there something that relates to what uh, an officer or an investigator is seeing right now? Can you pull from all of this something that is traceable in terms of what does it connect to from a previous investigation that can assist? So there are a lot of places that we're seeing force multiplication through tools that are relieving people from 
having to sort through and dig through things that are just you know, time consuming and, and not necessary anymore. So I think in law enforcement, it will be transformational. You know, uh, we do a lot of work in, in child sexual exploitation with Australia in particular, also UK and, and other partners. Uh, there it's streaming content out of the dark web. Uh, it's, it's crypto networks. We can do uh, bulk cash money laundering. Uh, now we can piece together networks in three days, what took 10 experts three years all, uh, as, as recently as 2019. And, and so there's a night and day in terms of trying to distill from all the information out there something relevant to an investigator right now. And, and I think that's the key thing that we want to do. We want to enable people to do what they're really skilled at and, and try and you know, get rid of the, the, the things that are just a, you know, a sink of time. The pain points, I suppose. I suppose that's part of the, the technology challenge is finding the problems to solve rather yeah. than trying to solve something that you're not aware of. The, the technology first versus the problem first. Yeah, and with AI, there's a lot of that. Everyone wants, you know, we have to have AI. AI yeah. is not a panacea. Uh, it is a, a catchphrase for a you know, thousand different things. Yeah. Uh, it, it captures things we've been doing forever. Some of it is new, some of it is not. And yeah. so if you were doing statistics or fitting a line through points, that's AI today. And so you, know, you, you have to question what, what is actually new here? Is there a, a new functionality? Is there something of value? It, it shouldn't be about AI. The question is, are you doing something operationally relevant and, and what are the, the figures of merit that you are trying to demonstrate with whatever it is that might include AI, but it doesn't need to. AI, AI is not the solution for everybody. It's not a silver bullet, but it is a useful tool in the right way if you have the right expectation of what it really is. I think that's a good summary. I suppose to finish off is, what's a good takeaway from you? I don't know how often you come to Singapore. We're just saying we uh, hosted you recently in Sydney, which is great yeah. to see. But uh, yeah, maybe a takeaway from the TechX Summit and Millie Pole. Anything new that you're seeing here or so sort of your key, key meetings that uh, you would be having takeaways? I, I think it's kind of, again, identifying common purpose. There are a lot of problems we all face. Looking ahead at the world and the challenges for the homeland, you have to talk with people. People are innovating. You know, the thing about today's world is innovation is everywhere. Uh, it's, it's in small companies largely around the world. And, and you don't know what you don't know. And, and there is so much information out there. There is no way for any single person to have a grasp yeah. Of, of what's out there. And so you have to come, you have to talk with people, you have to understand how is it through your eyes? What are you seeing? What, what is uh, piquing your interest? What, what are your challenges? And, and those conversations are key. You're not gonna get it sitting behind your desk in the office. The scary part for me is often the, the, the hearing and seeing the same things. <laughs> well, <laughs> then, like, okay, then, then so can tackle it together. <laughs> you know, right. partners in, in, in solving problems is, yes. gets you a lot farther. Well, there's a USA Pavilion here with Kalman uh, on the floor as well. So okay. hopefully you've been out of stop have, by. I have yet to stop by and okay. see them. So uh, nice. well, we're thank media you. partners to Kalman as well, but uh, they're everywhere. But uh, it's good to see the US Pavilion here alongside Singapore. Uh, but Dmitry Kuznetsov, yep. uh, the Under Secretary for Science and Technology with Department of Homeland Security. Pleasure to host you here in Singapore, and hopefully we'll catch up with you next time you're in Australia. Great as well. to see you. My pleasure. Love to see you in Sydney as well. Great. Thank you very much. All right.